Getting your progress going in Albion Online as a new player can be very tough since it's a sandbox game. Tons of beginners get lost in what they have to do after the tutorial, whilst ironically they could be doing a ton of different things. Which is exactly why I made this guide. If you want to learn about some of the best activities you can do as a beginner that will make you gain a combination of silver, fame and even great amounts of loot, this video is a must watch for you. And of course, as it says in the title already, all of these can be done solo, even as a brand new player. Now it is important you have a build that is effective, which is why I used various builds throughout this video that you can use as well. As a new player, you want a build that's cheap yet super effective, so I made sure to share some of my previous videos in the comments below in which I covered those exact type of builds. The first activity I'm going to show you today is farming roaming mobs, which is one of the most popular ways to progress your character in Albion Online. And no surprises there, because these mobs make for massive amounts of fame, a generous chunk of silver, and they also have a chance to drop high value items. These mobs can be found all over the world of Albion, and they're pretty much in every zone and about everywhere. Sometimes you'll find them on their own, and other times they'll be in groups. Nonetheless, you will find a fast amount of them in the open world and can farm them as much as you'd like to. Now these roaming mobs come in four different levels where each upgrade makes them much stronger foes whilst also increasing their rewards. The level 1 mobs are the weakest and have a default appearance. They are extremely easy to kill while still making for a decent amount of fame and silver. You can easily pull multiple of these mobs together and farm them in a matter of seconds. A lot of players actually skip these packs of mobs because they are the lowest level, so you'll find the level 1 mobs all over the open world. In my opinion, even the level 1s are worth killing because it just takes a few seconds to do so, and especially when grouped, they quickly add up to plenty of fame and silver. The level 2 mobs can be recognized by their glowing auras, they are still relatively easy and quick to kill, and already make for noticeably more fame and silver with the occasional item drop. You'll often find them together with the level 1 mobs so you can just farm them all together. If your goal is to farm fame and you could use the extra silver, I would highly recommend killing the level 2 mobs as you go about roaming. The level 3 mobs is where it starts getting interesting. These mobs have a circle beneath them and will typically form a challenge already as they have a wider pool of deadly abilities and take much longer to kill. These make for really good fame and silver and regularly drop items as well. Although you want to be more careful when you approach the level 3 mobs, it's very wise to kill them whenever you spot them in the open world, as they will heavily contribute to your progress. And then the most interesting, the level 4 mobs, which are the highest levels of roaming mobs that can be recognized by the spikes beneath them. These are the hardest of the bunch to kill, and you want to be super careful when you challenge them. They have very strong abilities and a large health pool, so it will take some time for you to kill them. But they do make for massive amounts of fame and silver, and often drop valuable items as well. If you see a level 4 mob, you always want to kill them, as their progress value is simply enormous. You can go about farming roaming mobs in the blue and yellow zones, which are considered safe zones, so you won't lose your items if you get knocked in these areas. This also brings the advantage that you can bring your best gear and have an easier time killing the mobs. So if you are a new player, you may want to start off in the blue and yellow zones. But of course, the safe zones also have their disadvantages in that they are typically overcrowded and more importantly, they make for way lower bonuses compared to the full loot areas. Which is why, instead, you may want to farm roaming mobs in the red and black zones. Now the red and black zones are full loot PvP areas, meaning that if you die to other players within them, you will lose all items on you, including your gear. Which is why you want to go with items you're okay with losing when you farm roaming mobs in these areas. And you should definitely consider farming them here, because these zones make for much higher bonuses compared to the safe zones. Other than huge fame and loot multipliers, the PvP zones also have the possibility to drop the highest tier items, whilst the safe zones do not. The safe zones are also limited to tier 5, whereas the PvP zones go all the way up to tier 8, which is the highest tier within the game. Naturally, the higher the tier of the mobs, the more fame, silver and loot they make for. 
Therefore, you have many reasons to farm the roaming mobs in the more risky areas. As a bonus, when you farm roaming mobs in the outlands, which are the black zones, you will get an additional layer of rewards for killing them in the form of might and favor. If you are curious about what might and favor are and what kind of rewards they make for, you can watch the guide I linked below. The second activity I want to show you today are green chests on the roads of Avalon. It is the only activity within this guide that doesn't have a safe option as the entirety of Roads of Avalon is built upon the Black Zone. Nevertheless, it makes for great solo progress in silver and fame, and especially loot, it might just be one of the most underplayed contents within the game, which is great for you because the amount of loot you can get from this activity is superior compared to many others. There are Avalonian portals that lead to the Roads of Avalon all over the different zones in the world of Albion, these come in three different colors and sizes. There is the green portal that has two charges on a five minute cooldown, the blue portal that has seven charges on a 10 minute cooldown, and the gold portal that has 20 charges on a 20 minute cooldown. Once you enter one of these portals, you'll find yourself on one of the hundreds of roads zones that exist within this wormhole. Aside from finding even more portals inside that connect to other zones, you'll also find various types of content you can do. The one activity on the roads that I want to teach you about are the green chests. These green chests are something you can do on your own, in which you kill all the mobs on the camp, and finally the boss that's guarding the chest. The camps are either tier 4, tier 6 or tier 8, and with each increasing level they make for much better rewards. A lot of players skip the tier 4 camps as they make for the lowest rewards, but especially if you are a newer player, I highly recommend you do those too, because they are easy to clear and can still make for a decent amount of loot. Also, since the roads are black zones by default, you will also get might and favor from this activity, which will ultimately make for even more rewards. Now, I do have to warn you that if you die on the roads, you will lose all items on you, including your gear. So if you decide to do this activity, just go out with a cheap yet effective set. If done right, with an effective build such as the ones I've linked down below, clearing a camp should only take you a few minutes and your set will cost you about 50k silver. The next activity I'll show you can also be done on the roads of Avalon, but the majority of the players do it the good old fashioned way in which they do them either in the Royal Continent or the Outlands. The activity is solo dungeons, and although it doesn't make for the most silver, fame or loot rewards, it still remains one of the most popular activities thousands of players do on a daily basis. The main advantage of doing solo dungeons is that it's fully safe when you do them in the blue and yellow zones, but they are also considered highly safe when doing them in the red and black zones. So when you do them in the unsafe areas, you still benefit from the highest fame and loot multipliers, whilst being highly safe throughout. And that's because once you enter a solo dungeon, the dungeon will close 90 seconds later, given no one else followed you inside. So if you enter a solo dungeon and wait that time out, the entrance disappears from the world and no one else can ever enter, which is what makes this content highly safe to do even in the full loot areas. Solo dungeons can be found all over the world of Albion. The system spawns them at random, so you will find yourself stumbling upon them as you roam around. However, since there are many players that are doing them, there is a high chance someone is already clearing it, or that the dungeon was spawned by a different player. You can spawn your own solo dungeons with a map that you can purchase from the marketplace, and it's the preferred way of doing solo dungeons by almost everyone that does them. Aside from having a guaranteed dungeon and not having to look for one, maps also make for higher base bonuses. You may have seen enchanted butterflies on solo dungeons, which indicate their enchantment level, and although the system spawns solo dungeons enchant over time, you can also buy enchanted maps yourself. Personally, I think flat maps are plenty, and especially if you are a beginner, I recommend to just stick to the cheaper maps instead. As for the content itself, it's very straightforward in that you have mobs and bosses inside that you kill for fame, silver and loot. I highly recommend going with an effective build, as the faster you clear these dungeons, the more of them you can do and the more progress you will make. Also some bosses can be very tough, especially the rare and legendary ones, which typically make for greater amounts of fame and loot. 
So having a good build that is actually capable of killing them and securing your rewards is of utmost importance. The board activity Corrupted Dungeons is especially made for solo players. This activity once again makes for PvE content very similar to the other three activities in that you have mobs, bosses and chests which all make for fame, silver and loot rewards. The thing that separates Corrupted Dungeons from all the other activities is that players can invade one another's dungeon and have a true 1v1 PvP experience. This content once again can be done lethal with full loot rules but also non-lethal without risking anything. To participate in a Corrupted Dungeon you have to find an entrance first which unlike solo dungeons cannot be spawned through a map. So you have to go out and look around for a Corrupted Dungeon entrance first. You can find them in the blue and yellow zones, which will lead you to the Hunter level that's non-lethal. And you can also find them in the red and black zones, which lead to either Stalker or Slayer, which are both lethal. So if you are a newer player, I recommend you just start out on the Hunter level to get your progress going and even gain some PvP experience without risking anything. Once you feel confident, ready and knowledgeable, simply advance to the lethal corrupted dungeons for even greater rewards. And once you enter one of these corrupted dungeons, you will find the demonic shrine right at the entrance, which you can activate for the first 45 seconds. If you activate it, you basically tell the system you're up for some PvP, and the system will do its best to find you an opponent. Once matchmaking goes through, you will either invade the dungeon of an enemy player, or they will invade yours. If you don't activate the shrine within those 45 seconds, you won't be invading other players, but there is still a slight chance that others can invade you. If an invasion takes place and you would rather not take on the fight, you can simply break three of the crystals that spawn once the enemy invades to kick them out of your dungeon. When you go about doing corrupted dungeons, it's wise to have a PvP center build that can help you in your battles, as that will be the main money maker later down the road. Although the PvE can still make for decent loot and fame, the real money is in the fight with other players. Especially when you are doing the lethal versions of the Corrupted Dungeons, winning your battles is a critical factor. So it's a good idea to pick a PvP-centered build for the Corrupted Dungeons and specialize yourself within it. And that concludes 4 of the best activities you can do in Albion Online as a new solo player to get your progress going in silver, fame and even loot. Although there are many other activities one can do solo, such as life skills in the form of gathering, crafting and farming, and even more advanced content I might cover later, the activities I shared with you today will get your progress going whilst being easy to get into even as a brand new player. With the hope the guidance I provided in this video had value, please consider liking this video and share it with your friends that are new to the game. Also make sure to use an effective build as you go about doing these contents, which I shared with you in the comments below. That's all for today guys, take care and I'll see you guys next time.